CataractCoach.com, let's look at this OCT of pseudoexfoliation. This is a case with a dense white cataract, and the patient has significant pseudoexfoliation syndrome, as seen on this anterior lens capsule. Now today the case is going to be a resident surgeon who's operating, and will have the guidance of me, the professor, teaching him along the way. Now we had a hard time seeing the pseudoexfoliation material, but once we put in the tripan blue dye and fill the out with viscoelastic, it becomes a lot more obvious. And so we see that material. We look on the OCT scan. There's the cornea. So we're going to focus it down onto the lens capsule. There's the iris, and on, there's the lens capsule. And you can see there are some of those deposits of pseudoexfoliation material on the lens capsule. It's, of course, very, very thin. And this side, we have a good amount of dilation. And also, look, there's not much of a gap between the iris and the lens capsule. That's good. This is telling me that we have a nice, good zonular strength and support. And that level of dilation also corresponds to a reasonable amount of zonular support. So we're not anticipating loose zonules. Let's go ahead here and make the main incision. Here's the keratome. He's going to make a temporal incision. It looks like it's uh, excellent, good in overall architecture and length. Tunnel length is good. Entering the AC now. There we go. And out we go. That was done beautifully. Now we'll go ahead to this capsorexis. We have this at two times speed just for the capsorexis in order to be a little more efficient. And we can see this resin's going to go in a clockwise manner. Important not to make a tiny capsulorexis. In patients with pseudoexfoliation, there can be capsule contraction and phimosis of the anterior capsulotomy in the post-op period. And it's important to start with a sufficiently large capsulorexis, so aim for at least 5 millimeters. In this side, which is hyperopic and a smaller anterior chamber, anterior segment, we need to make it a little bit longer, a larger capsulorexis. So here he's continuing the capsulorexis. Now in the subincisional area, it starts to go out, losing a little control. This is a good time to put in more viscoelastic. So more viscoelastic going inside, deepen the eye, position the capsule or flap a little bit better. And now you can go in with the forceps, grab it, and finish. So again, we want a sufficiently large capsulorexis. Do not make a baby capsulorexis. Also, this is a white cataract with good amount of nuclear density. And you don't want to have to struggle to remove it through a very small capsulorexis. So again, at least 5 millimeter capsulorexis. That's important. Back to normal speed now. Do a little hydro dissection. We have edited the video. Total length of the video today is about 15 minutes for an edited video. The actual surgical video in real time was about 30 minutes. So give yourself time for this. There's no rush in doing this. We just want to make sure we do a beautiful job. So for this resident, we're going to do a stop and chop technique. So here's the phaco probe. Going to make a central groove down the middle of the nucleus. And now, you certainly can do a quick chop as well. The advantage, if you're early in the learning curve like this resident, the stop and chop method, this central trench that we make, this groove, is actually debulking the central dense endonucleus. And so instead of chopping it and having two halves each 50% of the volume of the lens, if you make this central groove, that groove may take up 15, even 20% of the volume of the lens. And therefore, each half is actually going to be about 40% of the lens volume. And that's going to make it a little bit easier to deal with. So good grooves, nice, clean grooves. Here's widening up of the groove. Again, we want the groove a little bit deeper centrally and a little bit shallower in the periphery. So again, another good groove going down there. And once there's a sufficient depth to the groove, we're going to crack these two halves apart. So here's one more groove down the middle, and it looks pretty good. Maybe one more groove. Go right there, just down the middle. Obviously, it's tougher to judge here because we don't have a red reflex, given the nature of this dense white cataract but because it has good nuclear density it should be able to propagate the cracks quite easily so there you go a little more grooving there that looks pretty good so maybe one final groove down the middle 
And then we'll use the chopper to split the nucleus into two halves. Another advantage here is we're putting the phaco energy away from the central coronal endothelium. In a case like this, where we have a dense nucleus, there's going to be more phaco energy used. Here comes the chopper going in the eye. And we're going to crack the lens nucleus into two halves. So it's pushing apart. Notice how both the instruments are deep in the groove. That's very good form. That's a great job. And now once we position those, we can push the two instruments apart. And we'll get a crack. There it is. And just make sure we propagate the crack fully to the end. That looks great. Because you really have to have the two pieces completely free from each other, like we have now. Now, at this point, you can try to bring up a piece and we can rotate it first. So now you see completely two halves. That's for sure split. So rotate the nucleus to position it a little bit better. And I like the idea of going after the smaller of the two pieces. So I'm gonna buzz in with the phaco probe on a high vacuum level, so high vacuum, high flow, at least 400 millimeters of mercury. Buzz into that piece, beautiful, bring it up, get the chopper around the equator, almost, almost. So didn't quite succeed there. We'll try again, buzz in again, and see if we can get this piece up into the iris plane. So going in again, trying to remove this piece. So just take some patience here. You want to use the high vacuum level, buzz into the piece a little bit, use the high vacuum level to hold the piece, bring the right hand towards you to bring the piece out of the capsule bag. There it is. And then get the chop around it. Now, we'll bring that piece up. Now, if you don't get the chop right now, that's okay. Well, I like this idea. Keep the piece at the iris plane using the chopper to hold it. And then just apply the phaco energy to ultrasound aspirated, just like that. So that was a good job. Now that, that first piece has been removed, there's a lot more working room in the capsule bag. So the second half, which is the bigger piece, is remaining. Rotating that. And then we're going to buzz into the nuclear piece here. And you want to bring it towards you and then get the chopper around the equator. Almost, but try buzz maybe in more in the meaty part of this. Yes, rotate that buzz in here. Good, good, good. Advance the chopper. Bring the piece towards you. There it is. Now you have to buzz the probe in and hold it before you can chop. It's not buzzed in enough. Try again. Chopper's holding it, buzzing now, now split it. There it is, beautiful. Nice chop, split that nucleus into two uh, pieces. That's perfect. So just slow and steady. You'll do a few more little sub chops here to bring uh, the bulk of this into smaller pieces. So buzzing again with the phaco probe. You have to hold it with the phaco probe, and then, like that, you can chop it. Now on a white cataract like this, Sometimes these pieces are a little bit fibrous and the chop doesn't fully propagate through. That's okay. Take your time. Try again. Buzz in. Remove whatever fragments you can. And there we go. So the last little bit is left. Look down and you'll see there's no epinuclear shell and there's very little cortex. So nothing's really weighing down the caps or bag. What does that mean for us? What well, means as we remove the very last piece, let's keep the chopper in the safe position, meaning the smooth backside of the chopper towards the capsule bag to protect the capsule bag. The capsule bag can flop around under the fluidic conditions here because nothing is weighing it down, and we want to avoid anything touching the posterior capsule, such as the tip of the phaco probe. So that looks great. Nucleus is out. Wow, what a huge difference for this patient. So a little bit of cortex removal. Now during the cortex removal, look at the edge of the rexus. Very important. If the rexus edge is moving, what does that mean? The zonules are really weak and they're being broken or they're not supportive enough. So do not pull hard on the capsule. You do not want to damage the zonules more. So here, it's a pretty good removal of the cortex, maybe a tiny bit remaining. That's okay. I like the idea of filling that with the viscoelastic. This is the cohesive viscoelastic. And now it's time to deliver the lens. And we've got a surprise here. Watch carefully. Here comes the lens, single piece acrylic lens. And what do you notice? 
First, the eye is not in the primary. Come on, keep the eye in primary. Delivering the lens, here it goes, coming inside the eye, looking pretty good. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's on its side, it's flipping, it's going the wrong direction. Look at the, the haptics at this time, right now, are in the S formation. That is incorrect, look at that, that's the S formation. S, as you know, is not what you want. S is the stupid mistake. S is for stupid, don't do that. I don't mean to call anyone a name, it's just easy to remember that way. So we need to flip this lens back over the other direction. That's incorrect. That's better. Yes, yes, yes. Get that lens in the correct anti-S orientation. So taking your time here. Let's get the uh, let's get a little, maybe a little more viscoelastic in the eye. Let's get another instrument, a chopper. We need to get this correct in the orientation. Very important. Let's get this thing flipped over. So here's a uh, looks like more viscoelastic going in or spatula. So that's maybe viscoelastic. You don't want to script the corneal endothelium either. You'll be very careful of that. Let's take a look now. How does that look? That looks good. That's an that's the anti-S. That's what we want. Look how the first haptic, the nasal, the leading haptic is the, like the number seven. And then the trailing haptic's like the capital letter L. So overall, the haptics and the optic make the opposite of an S, the anti-S. That's perfect. Now, it looks like that in the trailing haptic that's near the incision here, bottom of your screen, is not quite in the capture bag. So this time, using the infusion of BSS from the IA probe in the right hand, now the chopper going in the left hand, and let's dial this lens around, and make sure that trailing haptic, that haptic, has to go in the capture bag. So, a little bit of a struggle here. That's okay. That's how we learn. So putting the chopper here at the haptic optic junction, and let's try to rotate this thing clockwise. There's that haptic. And let's dial it into the capsule bag. There we go. Is that it? Maybe a little more. And that snapped in the bag. That's it. Now let's center up that optic, and we have to make sure, very important, both haptics and the optic must be completely within the capture bag. If we have one haptic in the sulcus, the lens will eventually decenter. It will tilt and cause astigmatism and other high order aberrations. And that thick haptic can scrape the back of the iris, which can cause depigmentation there, translumination defects, glaucoma, microhyphema, chronic inflammation. We gotta avoid that. So make sure the entire lens the optic and both haptics are completely in the capsule bag. And let's remove the viscoelastic, center up the lens here. And that's looking really quite nice. The, and that rexa size, let's judge that, looks like it's a good about 5 millimeter capsule rexus, given that the optic is 6 millimeter in diameter. That looks great. Now, little tiny bits of, of cortex material or lens material that are stuck there, I wouldn't sweat it. At this point, especially in a beginning surgeon's hands, the patient's had an amazing transformation from a completely blind patient with a white cataract to a nice, clear visual axis, beautifully placed IOL now. This patient's going to have a great visual result. In medicine, it's the closest thing we have to a miracle, certainly in ophthalmology, is taking a patient with a dense white cataract and in the course of a short surgery like this, giving them back normal vision. That is truly awesome. That's why we go into this field. Seal up the incision, and let's call this a day. Make sure that lens is centered up, and the AC is deep, and the pressure is normal. So thank you for watching, and thank you for the resident for submitting such a beautiful video. Bye now.